So we will resume with the second talk of today. So this is a shorter talk. This is uh, given by uh, Lorenzo Baldi, who is uh, a PhD student in the network with uh, Bernard Morin. And I would like to uh, suggest that questions are put in the chat during the talk, and I will be uh, intruding uh, Lorenzo, I mean, choose to interrupt Lorenzo or not. And, uh, but otherwise, you know, I think that it would be good to have questions uh, left to the end. Um, all right, so uh, Lorenzo, please. Um, okay. it's, your, your, it's your role. Okay, uh, thank you, Evelyn. Uh, I will talk about exact moment representation in polynomial optimization. And I start giving a short uh, introduction to the cell relaxation. So, and the problem of polynomial optimization. So we have our objective function F, a polynomial in N variables that we want to optimize over a basic closed symmetry break set S defined by polynomial inequalities, G1, GR. And we denote F star, the infimum of F on this uh, basic closed symmetric set S. To solve this problem, Lasser proposed two hierarchies of relaxation, the sum of square relaxation and the moment relaxation. One replaces positive polynomials with uh, truncated quadratic modules, and the other one replaces measures supported on S with positive linear functionals. So let me uh, recall them to fix the notation. I denote R of X T polynomials of degree small or equal than T. And with sigma square, I denote the sum of square polynomials and the T stands again for degree small or equal than T. So I define QT of G, the truncated quadratic module defined by the GIs as polynomials of degree at most T of the form S0 plus SJ GJ, where SJ and S0 belongs to the sum of squares. And each addendum of this uh, sum uh, has degree bounded by T. I define the sum of square approximation F star sum of square D as the supreme in lambda in R such that F minus lambda belongs to the truncated quadratic module. And this is a lower approximation of our infimum F star. Now let me describe the moment relaxation. L T of G is the convex cone of positive linear functionals which <clears throat> positive on the truncated quadratic module. So are the linear functionals acting on polynomials of degree at most t such that sigma applied to q is greater or equal than zero for every q in the truncated quadratic module. We are interested in an affine section of this cone, the section denoted by L1, and the section is defined by sigma one equal to one. Okay, with this Notation, I can define the moment approximation, which is also a lower approximation of our infimum F star. And it is the infimum of sigma applied to F, where sigma belongs to the affine section of our cone of positive uh, linear functionals. So uh, let me recall the definition of finite convergence. We say that the moment or the sum of square relaxation has finite convergence if at some order of the relaxation, D, we reach the infimum F star of our objective function. And there have been work by Laurent, Ni, uh, Strumfels, and others uh, to determine finite convergence in some cases. For instance, if we have a finite real variety or using the gradient ideal in global optimization or the KKT ideal in uh, constrained optimization. And okay, we also have another property for the SOS relaxation, which is the one of exactness. We say that so the sum of square relaxation is exact if it has the finite convergence property, and if F minus F star belongs to the truncated quadratic module. In essentially, this is the property that the sup is equal to a max in the definition of the, mo the sum of square approximation. Okay. We will focus on the moment exactness that we define now. So we need two more definitions. The moment minimizers are the sigma in LD of G 
such that sigma applied to f is equal to the infimum f star or the minimum. And we also need, uh, need the annotation for restriction. This bracket k denotes the restriction to polynomials of degree at most k. So we say that the moment relaxation is exact if it has the finite convergence property and the moment minimizers are up to truncation coming from measures. So moment exactness is a kind of strong truncated moment property. Our moment minimizers should come from convex sums of evaluations at the minimizers on the same algebraic set S. And this moment exactness will be the main topic of the talk. And in particular, we will focus in two cases. We will prove moment exactness when S, the same algebraic set S is finite or under a small technical condition. And also we will prove that generically we accept the acceptance property hold. Now, let me go on. Uh, I recall some properties of the, this relaxation, in particular the moment one. So we know that the sum of square relaxation and the moment relaxation are lower approximation of the infimum. If the quadratic module is Archimedean, then we have convergence of these two approximation to the infimum, to the minimum in this case. Um, for the moment relaxation, we have a way to detect finite convergence as exactness, and it is the flat extension criterion for the moment matrix associated with linear functionals or the Enkel matrix. Mm. And another thing that we, we are going to describe is that from moment, if the moment relaxation is exact, the moment sequence yield minimizers. So we can compute the minimizers when the moment relaxation is exact. Okay, some, this table shows some cases uh, of possible situation. So there are cases where we don't have sum of square finite convergence nor sum of square moment finite convergence. And there are, these are particular cases in dimension one and two. And there are also in general for dimension with record and three. There are cases where we have sum of square and moment finite convergence, even sum of square exactness, but we don't have moment exactness. This means that there exist minimizing linear functionals that are not coming from measures, that are not evaluations at the minimizers. And the last but not least, when the same algebraic set S is finite, we are able to prove moment exactness. And in this case, even if we have finite convergence for the sum of square, there may be no sum of square exactness. So the soup may be not a max in the sum of square relaxation. Okay, let me just recall what I just, some notations that I just said, and then I will show you in a picture what is the situation that we are considering. So this bracket T denotes the restriction of a linear functional to polynomials up to degree T. A special role is played by evaluations if I have a point x in R to the end, the evaluation at x of f of a polynomial f is defined as f of x. And notice that the mapping which associated to this point x to the evaluation truncated in some degree t, it is the affine Veronese embedding which maps x1, xn to 1, x1, x2, xn, x1 square, x1, x2, x2 square, and so on. Now, we denote by M of S the Borel measure supported on symmetry of set S, and it was described in the previous day of the talk, of the workshop that by Chakalov theorem, if we truncate, if we restrict the Borel measure to polynomial up to a certain degree, conic sums of evaluations at the points of the symmetry of set are enough to describe Borel measures. So if we stay in a truncated setting, evaluations are more or less all that we need to describe moment of measures. Of course, by definition, these um, moment of measures are subset of our positive linear functionals. And we can prove that the evaluations are extremal points of our positive linear functionals. So I show you a picture and then I um, 
uh, ask for questions if there are. So this S is our symmetry break set S, which lies in R2DN. Then we lift it with the Veronese bedding. And as you see, the convex um, all of these evaluations are the Borel probability measures. I'm considering the affine section given by total mass equal to one. So. And what we are doing when we do uh, the moment relaxation is to consider an outer approximation of this convex set. The outer approximation of positive linear functionals, LT of G, and what happens if we increase the order of the relaxation is that we get closer to the moment, mm, sorry, to the convex set of Borel measures. So if we increase again the order, we will get even closer and so on. And what we expect is that we have convergence in some cases. Now, I, I think this is a good point, Evelyn, if there are questions in the chat. Um, so far, no, but if you give a minute, maybe people will come up with questions. So uh, maybe we uh, open the floor for whoever wants to unmute themselves. So I will just ask a tiny question. You don't need to be very long on it. So why is exactness interesting? Well, this motivation? Uh, because we, I mean, you see, I, I, I've shown you this example. There are examples where we have M or M finite convergence. So we reach the infimum at some point, but the moment minimizers, the minimizers are not coming from measures. So here, as you see, there are there exist sigma in these positive linear functionals which are not coming from measures. And if they are not coming from measures, we cannot recover the minimizers. Okay, so the because, point is to get the minimizers. Yes. Or okay. or even to be to be able to describe better this mm, moment sequence, because if we have a random uh, linear functional, we don't know what it really means. But if we know that it is coming from evaluations at the minimizers. This is a much better situation. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think you should uh, resume the the course of your. Oh, may, may, just may as I'm saying that, Monique, <laughs> may I ask a question? Sorry. So just to clarify along the question of uh, of uh, that was just asked. So w w when the sequence is exact. So you mean that your optimal solution is a convex combination of uh, of uh, Dirac measures and minimizers? Mm, that all the op optimal solutions are coming from optimal from uh, evaluations at minimizers. I so mean, uh, by, by coming from, you mean convex combinations? Yes, coming from. I mean uh, because mm, uh, I mean I don't know if you want to consider evaluation as subset. I mean the evaluation at points. Well. I don't know if you want to consider them as element in the dual here. Yes, sure. Well, so T. If you if you say that these evaluations are elements in the dual of the polynomial ring, okay, we say that the mini moment minimizers are evaluations, are convex sum evaluations. But if you want to well keep the meaning on the the measure meaning of evaluations, okay. 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 Thank, thank you. But you don't say that you can find them computationally to minimize those from. Yes, if we have moment exactness, we can. But 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 how how do you entangle the convex combination? I know how to do that when the, when you have the flatness condition. But in general, you have yes. I mean, we will have the flat con the, the flat extension property. Ah, okay. Thank because you. Mm, essentially, we can prove exactness when we have finitely many points or when we have finitely many minimizers. Oh, okay, then I understand if you have- So as, as, as I said before, there are two cases when we will prove exactness. One is for a finite symmetry break set. And in this case, you don't have any problem. The points are finite. And then we will prove exactness in, in a generic situation, but generically the minimizers are finite. Okay. And so this is why we can recover the minimizers in these yeah. cases. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
Okay, let's go on, or there are other questions? No. I think you should go on. Okay, so as you see in this picture, we have this kind of convergence of our outer approximation. Well, and this is the case. We proved that if we have an Archimedean quadratic module Q, then the Hausdorff distance between our outer, outer approximation and the Borel probability measures is going to zero as the degree of the approximation is going to infinity. So we prove that our linear functionals in the Archimedean case are close, even if they are not equal to measures, they are close to measures. And let me remark that this part, the measures are independent on the description of this imagery set S, while the outer approximation depends in principle on, well, depends, on the description of the same algebraic set S by inequalities, while Borel measures are not dependent on them. Okay. Uh, going on, well, let me uh, uh, some other words on this. Analyzing this rate of convergence could also be interesting to know, to analyze the rate of, of convergence of the moment approximation, to know how fast F M O M D is going to have star. These two uh, rate of convergence are very related and it would be interesting to analyze them. Okay. Uh, to go on with the study of our um, positive linear functionals, we, by definition, we know that LD of G is equal to the dual convex cone of our truncated quadratic module. What happens if we take again the dual by conic duality is that we get the closure of this truncated quadratic module. And so, in some sense, to study the moment relaxation, it's much more natural to use this closure instead of simply truncated uh, quadratic modules. And so, if one reminds that, okay, a quadratic module Q is the union of its truncated parts. We are not really interested in this object. We are more interested in this object, the union of all these closures. And we define Q tilde like that. Okay, I also need the definition of support. The support of a quadratic module Q is the ideal Q intersected in minus Q, and this is an ideal in R of X. Okay, so we will study our Q tilde using our support. We have the following result. If Q is a finitely generated quadratic module, then Q tilde is again a finitely generated quadratic module, and it is equal to Q plus the real radical of the support of Q. And this shows that when we are dealing with the moment relaxation, we are not simply considering the quadratic module, but we are extending it with the generators of the real radical of the support of Q. So, uh, some properties of our Q tilde are the following. Q is a subset of Q tilde, which is a subset of Q bar. This inclusion follow by this definition, but it's all, it was also studied by Scheiderer. And when we take to the dual of all these objects, we get the same results by conic duality. And of course, if the quadratic module Q is Archimedean, this is equal to Borel measure supported on the same algebra except S. And let me also mention the stability property, uh, which is a property related to the finite convergence of the sum of square relaxation. And we know that if Q is stable, then Q tilde is actually equal to the closure of Q. And this was proven by Scheiderer. Um, okay. Let me go on. Uh, let me talk about genericity. When we try to solve the moment relaxation, usually the solver outputs us uh, a point which is in the relative interior of a face of the cone of uh, positive linear functionals. So we are interested in points in the relative interior of these cones. And so I give the definition, we say that sigma star positively in a function is generic, 
if the rank of the NKL operator is the maximal possible among all the positive linear functionals. And with, uh, this is the NKL operator also called moment matrix. So if we have sigma, our linear functionals with moments sigma alpha, then H sigma D is equal to the matrix indexed by monomial sigma alpha plus beta, alpha beta, and to the n uh, alpha beta small uh, the norm of alpha and beta smaller or equal than d okay so we have generic elements which are points in the relative inferior and we can prove using the previous theorem what is the kernel of their ankle operator if we have q and uh, the quadratic module and j the real radical of the support of q we can prove that if the relaxation, the degree of the relaxation is big enough, then the idea generated by the kernel of the ankle operator is equal to the real radical of the support of Q, support of Q. Well, this has a corollary which was studied in deeper detail, and it is the case of the real radical of an ideal. If instead of inequalities, we have equations, we can equations h, we can consider the ideal i generated by the hi's. Then, for a sigma star positive linear functional, which is vanishing on the multiples of the hi's, sigma star generic, then we know that the ideal generated by the kernel of the ankle operator is between the ideal i and the real radical of i. And for d big enough, we have equality. So the idea generated will be equal to the real radical of i. And a natural question is to ask whether if our degree of approximation d is big enough or not. In the zero dimensional case, the flat extension criterion helps us to detect this condition. In the positive dimensional case, the situation is more delicate and we have some, some results, but they are not complete. Okay, let me go on. Uh, okay, finite symmetric sets. As I promised, I, I'm going to talk about finite symmetric set. So, if we suppose that the cruel dimension of the quotient ring of the polynomial ring modulo the support of Q is zero, we know that the symmetric set S is non empty and finite. And for some order D, all the positive linear functionals will be coming from conic sum evaluations at the minimizers. We have to go in a degree big enough and truncate in a smaller degree. And this degree of truncation depends on the regularity rho of the minimizers, uh, of, sorry, of the finite symmetry set S. As a consequence, in this case, the moment relaxation is exact for all F, because notice that here we are saying that all these two cones agree and not only the moment minimizers. So when we intersect this with sigma applied to f equal to f star, we will get only, again, we will get only evaluations. And so the MOM relaxation will be exact for all f. This allows us to recover the minimizers using the previous theorem, we know that the real variety associated to the kernel of the ankle operator is equal to the set of the minimizers. In, if we consider a generic minimizing linear functional, we can also use strong duality uh, results, for instance, the one by Joss and Henriot, to show that in this case, under this hypothesis, the dimension of the, this quotient ring is zero. Uh, that we have some square finite convergence. And there also, let me say uh, this, uh, there have also been works in the past about finite, um, finite symmetric sets. Essentially, finite symmetric set defined by uh, equations and inequalities where the equations define a finite real variety. And also the case of a finite symmetric set, but instead of considering the quadratic module, one has to consider the pre-ordering. And both these two cases, studied by Lasser, Laurent, Kostalski, Moren, Trebuchet, and also Ni, 
fall in this condition. So if we have equations defining a finite real variety, then this condition is satisfied. If we consider the preordering, then defining a finite symmetric set, then this condition is satisfied. Okay, so I can go on from a partic the particular case of finite symmetric sets to the general, general case. Um, well, I don't know if I have time. Maybe I have to run. Okay, Bandoration conditions are conditions, uh, regularity conditions introduced by Marshall, and they are generic condition as was proved by, by me. And we know that if the boundary action condition holds at every minimizer of our objective function f, then these, these minimizers are smooth isolated points. And under this regularity condition on the minimizers, we can prove exactness. So if we have our objective function f and an Archimedean quadratic module q, if we assume that the boundary action condition holds at every minimizer f on the symmetry back set s, then the moment relaxation is exact. And as before, for a generic minimizing linear functional, we can prove that the real variety associated to the kernel of the Enkel operator is equal to the set of minimizers. Now, since uh, boundary duration conditions are generic, moment exactness is a generic property. So if we pick uh, generic polynomials f and g1 and gr, we will get moment exactness. We can recover the minimizers from the ankle operator and we have finite convergence. Okay, to extract the minimizers, then one could imagine the following uh, algorithm. Well, the first idea is that maybe if one knows the minimum f star, one could add the equation f minus f star to isolate the minimizers in the same algebraic set S. Exactness is a generic condition, so we have exactness for this augmented relaxation L to kg with the equations, the equation f minus f star, and we can recover the minimizers in this new extended equation. Now, a problem could be that f star, the minimum, is not usually known. And so we may replace it with an approximation. And the approximation could be given by the moment relaxation at some order d. So the algorithm could go as follows. We can compute f star, the approximation of the minimum for some order k of the initial relaxation. Then we compute a generic element sigma star in the augmented relaxation with f minus f star moment k. And now there are two cases. If the approximation is not good enough, then this set will be empty. And the solver will tell us that the problem is infeasible. On the other hand, if the approximation is good, the approximation of the minimum is good, this problem will be feasible and we will be able to extract the minimizers from the moment from the Enkel matrix. Now, yes, I, I have what, one minute. Uh, let me uh, show this example. For instance, when we try to recover the minimizers of the Motskin polynomial. So if we want to globally minimize the Motskin polynomial, we do not put any constraint at the beginning and we simply run our optimization um, algorithm and we get this minimum. We get this approximation of the minimum, which is a very good approximation. But if one try to recover the minimizers using this moment sequence, the moment sequence associated to this solution, we are not able to find them. So what we do is to add f minus f star approximated in, by the moment uh, relaxation in degree four, and thus use LD plus or minus f minus f star moment four, we perform another uh, uh, moment re relaxation, and we see that the approximation of the minimum is more or less the same. We don't gain any anything new, but in this case, we can recover the minimizers. We can 
get them from the minimize the linear function associated with the solution. And as you see, they are found with very good precision. OK, uh, just to tell some words on what will, how, how we will move on. OK, the first point is that we want to investigate the convergence of the cone, our outer approximation to the cone of measures also to understand the, the order of convergence of the Lasserre relaxation. Okay, even if we don't have finite convergence of these convex sets, we may be interested in low rank approximation of our minimized linear function. So in the picture before we have our approximation and we are interested in the projection of our minimized, of our linear functionals to the convex set of measures. Another point could be to investigate a test for real radicality of the anchor operator. And of course, to exploit structure and sparsity in the description of our positive linear functional cone. Uh, yes, I think here you have the reference for the article that we, for the preprint that we have and Thank you for your attention. All right. Very nice. Thank you, Lorenzo. So I'd like to leave the floor first to uh, possible questions. Otherwise, I'll uh, launch the ball. OK, so uh, here is my uh, warming up the floor question. So. So if your um, problem is um, exact, I mean, do you recover all the minimizers? Uh, is it always yes. the case? So it's all of them? Yes, it, because we, you are taking sigma star generic. So we take sigma star generic in uh, L, D of G, truncated in some K, and this is equal to cone XC, well, okay, the minimizer, sorry. C such that f of C is equal to f star. And since the sigma star is generic, it means that, okay, this co if assume that the minimizers are finite, these minimizers are, the evaluations associated to these minimizers are this one, for instance, you take the convex L of these evaluations, so this is C1, this is evaluations at C1, evaluation at C2, evaluation at C3, evaluation at C4. And the generic point here will be something of the four sum omega i evaluation at Xi, where all the omega i will be strictly positive. And so in the kernel of the, the kernel of the anchor operator will be, have rank four, and we recover all the four minimizers because sigma star is generic. Of course, so, if we... so the number of those uh, minimizers, does, that, does it have a, an influence on the degree of a finite convergence or any? Yes, yes. The number of minimizers is, the number of points of the symmetry set if it is finite or the number of minimizers can, can change the degree of the, the order that you have to reach to to have an, an exact moment relaxation. Because essentially, if you increase the number of points, you will need more polynomials to have more, inter sorry, a higher degree to have interpolator polynomials, essentially. But I under I mean, I understand. So that, that's the reason for my question. But is it clear? I mean, can you uh, always, I mean, can you really say something about? Uh, Yes, somehow, yes. The impact of uh, the uh, the number of points of minimizers and well, the, the degree of um, at which here, convergence is uh, achieved? Uh, this, this truncation, okay, this K is just to say this happens from one point on, so you can forget about it. You, we have this bound, which is given by the regularity of the symmetric set. So the, the regularity of the ideal defining the points. So if our symmetry set S is uh, uh, C1, okay, as before, I don't have to write it. So, mm, 
well, this is equal to the regularity of the idea I defining the symmetry vector set S. So if we increase the points, the regularity will increase generic, generally. And so this degree will increase also. This is the degree of truncation from which you can start. And then there is this D. What's happening is the following. We have a moment sequence up to degree D. And then at some point we have two rho minus one. Yes, okay. We are discarding this part and just restricting ourselves in this part, in this, in this piece. And then of course, if we increase this by one, we will increase this by one. And so we gain one space in this representation. Okay. And okay, this part here is controlled by the regularity. And this gap here depends on the quality of the representation that you have. If you have the, the defining equation of the points and the good equations, then you don't have any gap. If you have inequalities uh, with strange degrees or maybe, uh, well, some strange situations, this gap will, will grow. We didn't go into the details. We could, I mean, the proof is somehow constructive, so we could go into these details, but we didn't investigate it. Okay, thank you for this detailed answer. I think we have a different question on of a different nature by Victor. So maybe Victor, you can um, unmute yourself and um, ask more precisely what you would like to know about the numerical experiments. Okay, well, maybe not. So I'm not sure what you wanted to know, Victor. So he, Victor put something in the chat. Oh, his mic is not working, so. Okay. Well, we... Maybe he will ask offline then. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we performed these computations with the moment tool package in Julia. You, you can find it. You can find it online on GitLab or GitHub, I don't remember, or somewhere. And they are very fast, I mean, at 4 degree 4. And it, the nice thing is that we, we also have this possibility to, to recover the minimizers. Mm, and this is also not so... Mm, well, okay, usually, so... Usually works well, I mean, but Bernard maybe can say more about it. So the, the more precise question of Victor is the following. Why can you obtain Modskin's minimizers, interrogation point, because of the numerical perturbation induced by the SDP solver? Well, actually, we are somehow cheating okay. because um, uh -huh. it wouldn't be possible if the solver um, if the solver does exact computations, this is not possible. I mean, we are using the fact that the solver uses approximate computations. And since the solver uses approximate computations, an approximation of F star is enough to recover approximately the minimizers. Because as, as I've shown you here, we, we don't necessarily have finite convergence of these cones. We don't know. Well, actually, it is in very few cases. But since the solver is working approximately, uh, this is enough to recover approximately the minimizers. OK, Monique, I think, has the next question uh, already so present in mind. Maybe I can just comment on this. It's interesting what you say. So. By adding the equation, uh, you add an extra equation, and at order four, if I see for the mod skin, you can extract the minimizers because yes. flatness happens, right? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Yeah. So, as, as you, you might be aware, of that, I mean, this has already uh -oh. been observed that uh, uh, e even without doing uh, uh, adding anything, but going to higher order for the mod skin polynomials, so error, numerical errors 
at some point permit to extract also global minimizers from what skins. It's a paper by uh, ah, okay. a, a group of Japanese people that maybe you would like to look at. Uh, I, I didn't know, so uh, maybe you we will. Uh, thank you, thank you, Monique. I, I can try to find out again, but Vaki Muramatsu, uh, so, so they made a, a study. Oh, in, in, indeed, numerical errors have sometimes their own advantages. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Monique. All right, so somebody else is uh, muting or unmuting. So we have uh, more comments uh, by Victor. There are several papers on the topic, apparently. So maybe Victor will send you the links. I'm sorry, Victor, that you can't talk. Apparently, you really uh, want to. So. <laughs> That's really too bad for us, too. So on uh, these uh, voiceless uh, questions of uh, Victor and comments by uh, Monique, I uh, think uh, we would like to thank um, Lorenz for his nice talk mm -hmm. and uh, invite you to all enjoy your lunch break before we meet again at uh, 2 p.m. this afternoon for two exciting talks again. <laughs>